Welcome to LUTV News In Focus, where we feature interesting topics on campus, in the community, and in the world of culture. I am Jonathan Tippett. Former LUTV News anchor Josh Giannis found success as a content creator, whether hosting game shows or producing commercials. Since his graduation, he has always made time to assist his alma mater. Josh is here to share what he gathered from his time at LUTV News and how it helped him as a professional. Josh, thank you for joining us. Good to be here, man. You guys have upgraded quite a bit since I've been here last. Yeah, we've recently done some renovations. It's very impressive. Thank you for having me. It's and great I, to be here. I have to say that last time I interviewed Daryl, and you might be familiar with him. Yes. And uh, he was, he's, he refers to himself as Little Daryl, so the height differential is a thing that's going on right now. Ah, so I'm glad yes, that there's the joke. He I'm, told me beforehand there was going to be a height it's joke. Not, it's not much of and one. And there it is. It's not much of one. Yeah. He gets it too often anyway. <laughs> so, Josh, tell me about your time at LUTV News. LUTV was great for me. Um, I started LUTV sort of late in my college career. And I uh, always knew that I wanted to be in broadcasting. I always knew that I wanted to work in television. And just sort of the way things worked out with my academic career, it fell toward the end. And so I did uh, the newscast as my practicum and, uh, and also did the radio practicum as well, which was fantastic. But uh, I did a semester of that, anchored, and, and loved it. I mean, it was fantastic. And then beyond that, you've done quite a bit of work. Tell me a little bit about that. So I started when I was in high school sort of building a network, if you will. I was kind of the kid that would find people who did what I wanted to do and email or call and, and write letters and Proactive. say. Proactive. Right, and, and I didn't know that it was you know networking at the time. I just was curious and wanted to learn from these people. And so I would write emails and say, hey, I'm you know, a 15, 16 year old kid and this is what I do, which is I'm a high school student and this is what I want to do, which is what you do. And, uh, and built some great connections and friendships and uh, relationships that I still have today. And uh, so I got some pretty early on opportunities when I started college. I mean, between summer breaks and spring breaks and things like that, I would go uh, do some gigs and I would you know, work kind of low on the totem pole, but it was stuff that gave me great experience. And uh, so I graduated from Lamar in 2007 and had my degree in communications with an emphasis in broadcasting. And uh, from there, kind of completed a 10-year sort of span in working in uh, series TV. Uh, worked in casting for a little while, did some stuff with Biggest Loser, Last Comic Standing, Super Nanny. Uh, went on to do some stuff behind the scenes at Nickelodeon on a great show called My Family's Got Guts. Uh, I won a, a host search uh, competition, if you will, for Game Show Network. Got to host on GSN briefly. And then stuff started to sort of change a little bit. Stuff started to shift. Um, in 2012, I started my company, Joshua Productions. So I came uh, home, as I say, although my actual home was always, you know, Southeast Texas. I traveled a lot, uh, but made, you know, Southeast Texas my, my permanent home once again and started my company uh, in 2012. And uh, we're in our sixth year. And so we primarily serve in the advertising industry and we do lots of commercials and safety videos and long form videos, but uh, every now and then Your I sort of get to go back into that world a little mm. bit. So we have a documentary that we co-produced called On Your Mark uh, about the life and career of television icon Mark Summers. We had Neil Patrick Harris and Ryan Seacrest and some other great folks in that, Seth Green as well. That's right. And, uh, and so that was a great project that uh, is still going on at the moment. And, and got to do some other fun stuff, but we love being back, and, and uh, when I say we, I'm talking about the folks that work in the company. We love being in Southeast Texas and working with uh, area businesses and things like that. It's, it's very gratifying. So I'll get back to that in a second. I do want to ask, uh, how did this, it's billed as a Southeast Texas game show, Family Knows Best. Tell me a little bit about that. How did so they get started? <laughs> Family Knows Best. We did that for two years. Yeah. Uh, we did, I forget how many episodes of that. We did around 20 episodes of Family Knows Best, we'll say. And so it was the first uh, family game show. First and Texas. only. First and only. Yeah, I mean, Until you it's know. Until dethroned later. Uh, right, right, right. You know, it wasn't like people were beating down the doors to get in the first position right. spot to do a family game show. But, uh, you know, we'll always hold that sort of. Uh, you know, Mark, but Family Knows Best was a competition show between two Southeast Texas families that, uh, you know, battled in different games. We said it tested their brains, bodies, and abilities, and, uh, and basically their abilities to work together as a family. So every uh, competition that was on the show involved the members of the family working together as a unit. And the way that came about, and that was actually the first thing we ever did with Joshua Productions before we even knew that we were going like to go... like the flagship production? Yeah, well, it was at the time, before we even knew that we were going to, um, you know, do advertising-based work and things like that, 
we had created the company just to do Family Knows Best. And so uh, a couple of folks had said, you know, it'd be neat if you did a game show for Southeast Texas. At that point, I had worked on a couple of uh, larger game shows and, and things like that. And they said, it'd be neat if you did something for Southeast Texas. So uh, out of necessity for a gig, to be completely honest, we created Family Knows Best and uh, it did very well the first year. And so we came back bigger and better, as they say, the second year, bigger set and, and uh, tournament format competition and things like that and, uh, and had a blast doing it. And it really was the thing that sort of launched the company and, and gave a big shot in the arm to the credibility of it. So I'll, I will always be very thankful to, uh, to Family Knows Best. And we did it right here, in fact. Uh, the control room. Like right here? Like in this very spot. No, uh, in the in the black box theater next door here at yeah. Lamar, we shot Family Knows Best, and in the um, control room here at LUTV, we routed all the cabling and things like that. So the LUTV control room was the control room for Family Knows Best. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I had no idea such such things could occur. That's right. Just so right there. Who says dreams only come true at Disney? Not me. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, here, but I don't want to get too much farther into that, but I will ask one more thing. Uh -huh. How difficult was it to, to construct kind of the challenges and things like that for, for a production like that? Um, everything sort of had its own challenge. First off, you're working with a crew of, you know, 30, 40 people, none of which had done a game show before. So that was the biggest challenge, getting people acclimated to doing a game show. Unfortunately, everyone was very sharp and, and you know, rose to the occasion very quickly. Um, but everything else sort of happened rather organically and quickly and easily and efficiently because once everybody sort of realized where they needed to be, uh, we all moved as a team and as a unit and, and different departments kind of did their own things. And so it all happened, you know, extremely efficiently. So I'm really proud of that. So you moved, you, you, you did all this work and you're traveling all around and then you came back to Southeast Texas and you founded this company. What was the inspiration to to start the company, to come back to, to Southeast Texas? Like what, what motivated you to make that kind of decision? Okay, I'll tell you the story. I've never told anyone this story before. So this is- no one knows how to ask it right. That's right. I know how to ask it you right. You know how to ask it right. So this is the real story. Um, so I had an audition in I think April of 2012. And it was for an opportunity that I thought was like the biggest career opportunity I had. It was a hosting opportunity. It was down in Florida. And I thought, okay, this is it. This is what I've been working toward my entire life. And so I flew out there on my own dime, and I go in this room with all these people. First off, at the, at the moment, at, you know, in 2012, I was like 27, 28, uh, six foot five, bass voice, walking in this room with like 18 and 19 year old, you know, Disney looking, very attractive, like actors and hosts and things like that. So first off, I stuck out like a sore thumb, and I thought, well, this is either going to be mine, like easily, or this is going to be a total. Or you will never even be considered. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So the thought crossed my mind. And I went in and I did a read for this host role. And I thought I did great, thought it was fantastic. And then right there in the room in front of everyone, they said, it's not gonna be you. And so everything just kind of got slow, you know, slow motion, everything just sort of yeah. got blurry and hazy and, and what have you. And so I walked out of the room. I don't remember what I did after that. The next thing I remember is riding the plane back home. And I thought, okay, God, you've got my attention. What do I need to get out of this? And uh, so I had blocked out the time to do the gig. I had nothing going on. And at the time I had a DJ business and things like that. I had booked nothing. And um, came back and I called Gordon Williams here at Lamar, who's one of my best friends in the world. And I said, I gotta figure uh, something out. And years prior, we had kicked around the idea of doing a game show. And he actually was the one that came up with the name Family Knows Best in a meeting just uh, sitting around. And I said, I think we need to take Family Knows Best off the shelf and figure out what that's going to be. And I think we need to do that. And uh, I remember there was sort of a, a silence on the phone. And he said, after that little beat, OK, how are we going to do it? And then we got to work. And so we were in production in August. So a few months later, we were rolling. But, uh, but that was sort of how the company started. It was out of necessity and the one big thing that uh, in my mind I thought I was working my whole career toward ended up being the thing that I needed to sort of shake things up to um, do something different. So I've never looked back. I am so incredibly happy doing what we're doing. Family Knows Best was great, but it was sort of a stepping stone to get to the next thing, which is where we are now. So you kind of were working your whole career towards that moment, just not in the way that you anticipated. Wow, I've never thought of it that way before. Because I know how to say it right. 
That's deep, man. I gotta look at the camera when I say that kind of That's thing. That's deep. Thank you. That's fantastic. You. You're you're 100 right. And long before I hosted Family Knows Best right here on Fox, I was a student at Lamar and a news anchor for LUTV News, right here on this set. What kind of advice? would you give to someone that was wanting to chase that dream of you know being someone that they whether it's in production or just in any aspect of life really i think first off you have to have a passion for what you do and you have to learn to be really good at what you do and realize that those two things may not happen th at the exact same time so you may find that you're passionate about something that you're not necessarily good at yet so in the case of having a dream, it's something you have to work toward. It's something that you're not necessarily always born with the ability to do. Um, but on the flip side, there may be something that you're naturally great at and you haven't developed a passion for that yet. So figure out how to make those two roads cross. And if you can find that rare third thing, which is to get someone to pay you to do what you love and what you're good at, then uh, you've got it made. It's pretty rare. It is. It is. But, uh, you know, if you can figure that out, then... Uh, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. And then also, you know, uh, build your network. You know, network with people, build your relationships. Um, I'm gonna mention Gordon again, something great that he always says that I learned from him that I apply to this day is you never know who you're sitting next to and who they're gonna be one day. And so don't burn bridges and always sort of maintain those relationships because you never know in five, 10 years where you and that person you're sitting next to in class or on the bus or you know, in the DMV or, or wherever, or in another job, you know, we are gonna end up. So uh, it's very funny. And, and I've learned that that has um, been true a lot of times over the years where, you know, paths cross again and you haven't seen someone in a long time and suddenly you're in the same vein and, uh, and you need one another as far as uh, work-wise and, and things like that, it's incredible. One last thing, I know we've got to wrap up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask anyway. How did Lamar in particular prepare you for the things that you've done and will continue to do? The great thing about Lamar was that they provided a lot of opportunities, not just in the classroom, but outside. And we had a lot of opportunities through programs like SetCast and work studies and things like that, uh, and even the Jason Project, to do work within our field that was meaningful, gratifying work that we could put on a resume that could help us project to another job that would um, you know, show that we were building a body of work. And, and that was really important to be able to have those opportunities. And I don't think that those opportunities would exist everywhere. Um, and also the great thing that I always say, my biggest takeaway from Lamar is always the people. You know, in this room that we're sitting, I built some of the best friendships that I have. And I will always be grateful to LUTV and Lamar for that. And not just friendships, you know, for the sake of being friends, but also relationships as far as business goes and, and television relations and things like that. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a great springboard all around, not just from an educational standpoint, but just from um, the standpoint of, you know, business enhancement and, um, just everything. I mean, Lamar was, was great to me. Couldn't put it more succinctly. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could, because I didn't put it so succinctly. Yeah, but I give you credit anyway. Well, thank you. So, thank you, Josh, for having, thank you, sir. For having me interview you. Thank you for pleasure. having me be interviewed by you. Oh, it was my pleasure. I, I promise. So, and thank you for watching LUTV News in Focus. To see more content from LUTV News, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll see you next time.